Today on What It's Like, a lost and mostly forgotten stellar car of the past, 1964 Oldsmobile Starfire. And it's hard to believe that this car sports an Oldsmobile badge. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost to time. We dive in deep with the specs, button switches, and knobs, take the tour, and most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you'll totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. A bit of bad news, this car was for sale at Classic Auto Mall, but it was sold. And I usually don't do, or I don't cover sold cars at dealerships, but this car was a really highly requested car, and I've never seen another one. For those that have never made it to the end of an episode, it's worth sticking around. Name That Tune is at the end of each episode. There is a new segment of Would You Rather. It's usually two scenarios, and something completely random at the end. 1964 Oldsmobile model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Dynamic 88, Jetstar F85, 98, Super 88, 442, and then there was the wagons, and then there was the Starfire. Oldsmobile offered the Starfire in three non-consecutive generations, which started in 1954. Starfire was used one year prior for a convertible concept car in 1953. First generation ran from 1954 to 1956, and it was part of the 98 series, so it was Oldsmobile's halo car. So because it was under the 98 series, 54 through 57 isn't technically considered first generation. I know, it's super confusing. First generation technically ran from 1961 to 1966, and second generation 1975 to 1980, built on the GM B-body platform along such cars as the Buick Wildcat, and the Pontiac Grand Prix. Let's compare the 63 and the 64. Starting in the front, 63 on the top, 64 on the bottom. It amazes me that the same body shape and they managed to style it completely different. Different grills, different bumpers. It's hard to see it at this angle, but the turn signals are more slender on the 64. Interestingly, the moldings on the top of the fenders go the whole length of the car on the 64, whereas they only pick up right after the door on the 63. Moving to the side profile, the 63 has a brushed aluminum panel that runs the belt line of the car, which the 64 doesn't have, but the 64 has wider trim running the length of the car. Notice just past the wheel well, the rocker panel trim is textured, and you'll see that better when we do the walk around. 64 has a vent just aft of the front wheel well, and it looks the same or similar to the vent found on the Buick Riviera, just flipped. 64 mirrors are mounted on the hood as opposed to the door on the 63. Starfire script is in different locations. Moving to the rear in the rear quarter section, they are totally different. Look at the fins on the 63 as opposed to the 64. On the 63, they go all the way to the end of the car, whereas the 64, they kind of have like a little bit of a, a, a swoop to them. And the taillight locations are different. They've been relocated to totally different rear ends bumpers and there looks to be more brushed aluminum trim in the rear section of the 64. Moving inside, looking at the dashboard, overall the same layout just updated. The steering wheels look the same with a different center. The speedometer has been revised. Brushed aluminum was added on the 64 and just looks cleaner in my opinion, especially the center console region with the tachometer. Which one do you guys like more in the comment section below? 64 Oldsmobile Starfire could be had as a convertible or a hardtop, and it competed with. Now, this is really tricky. So, the Oldsmobile Starfire was a really expensive car. It's also worth pointing out that it shared the body shell of the Jetfire, which was $500 cheaper than the Starfire. And the biggest difference was, was the Starfire was more appointed with better materials like leather seats as opposed to vinyl seats found in the Jetfire. To give perspective of how expensive this car was, 1964 Mustang started, now I know this is a totally different class of car, I'm just trying to give a little bit of perspective, $2,368, which you could buy two basement six-cylinder Mustangs for almost the price of this car. So 
What follows is a list of cars that you could consider if you were buying this car new back in 1964. Chrysler 300 convertible was $3,800. Buick Riviera was cheaper, $4,380. Pontiac Grand Prix, $3,500. Mercury Montclair, $3,230. Or the Ford Thunderbird, which was still cheaper, $4,485. While we're on the topic of money, let's talk specs. 215.3 inches long, 78 inches wide, 54.2 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 123 inches. It weighs 4,460 pounds. Price, $4,600, which is equivalent to you spending $44,040.85 in the year 2022. Total, 1964 Oldsmobile production was 546,112 units, of which 25,890 were Starfires. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 394 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.5 liters. It's good for 345 horsepower, 4,800 RPM, 440 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM, with a compression rating of 1050 to 1, when mated to the three-speed turbo hydromatic, zero to 60 could be had in 8.4 seconds. It'll do the quarter mile in 16.4 seconds. Average fuel economy is anywhere between eight to 10 miles to the gallon. Theoretical top speed, 126 miles per hour. So 1964, the turbo hydromatic comes out. In the comment section, I've been corrected a bunch of times that S stands for second, and it generally does stand for second, but for the Turbo Hydromatic, for whatever reason, GM wanted it to stand for super. So take a look at this advertisement. It says super range. In this owner's manual, it says super range for Turbo Hydromatic. Let's talk styling. Bit of an apology beforehand, so my voice is a little bit jacked up. I'm not sick per se i feel great actually it's just my voice is all messed up but let's talk about the styling just look at all of those lines especially in the front here like look at how this comes down into a point on the side like look at how aggressive that is it's a ridge here and then it continues on back making this part just a wee bit of a valley. And then this, this car is gorgeous. I had to drive a 65 Starfire and this one is so much cooler. There's so many more lines. Check out how this beaks. It looks very Ford like, especially down here at this bumper part. Doesn't that look like Bullet Bird to you? Looks like that to me. Notice all the chrome over the wheel well. Coming back, just check out this line here. It goes all the way back. It actually protrudes out more and more towards the back. Right here, it's protruding even more. And just notice how this is all pushed up. Check out the gas door. How cool is that? Coming back up here real quick. I love this. Also notice how all of this is textured down here. And it's like that the whole way out the back. Look at the drip rail situation. It does have drip rails. Check out the rear window. Look at how it's designed. Look at how it flows up like that. This car also has a center line on the trunk lid. Lots of aluminum on this car or bright work. Might be stainless steel actually. But there's a lot of it nonetheless. It's got fins and they're very nice. Also check out, there's a lot going on back here. How this comes out the side, this comes out the top. And then this line here. Look at these tail lights. Doesn't that look like the Lincoln logo in a way? I mean, it's taller. Very interesting. 
coming back down the side here just so you can see how aggressive this line is it's like a side fin also check out the wheel well situation it flares out ever so slightly this car is just gorgeous something else I want to point out this is kind of sort of it's not flat every other car that I've ever seen that had the cow vent right here it's generally flat this one rakes up just a little bit getting inside so before we do just check out how all of this operates also just look at all of the different lines in that door the window's got a nice frame around it and there's my finger for reference look at the tint on these windows these are electric windows so unfortunately we're not going to be able to open them but that's pretty good tint on that coming down and looking at this door panel and just take a gander inside this brings me back because I got to drive one of these cars over the summertime and it was it was a phenomenal experience I absolutely love the lights in here there's lights everywhere the door panel has a lot of bright work going on up here feels like a vinyl material but it has a little bit of a plushy not a plushy but a padded feel to it armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut lights so people can see you on the road when the doors open also when the doors shut it illuminates back here so you can see great feature door handle to get out window crank for the vent window and it operates like that coming down inside the pedal box down here I just love I just love how everything is in this car if you blindfolded somebody and they did not know cars they would think that they were in a Cadillac or something equivalent because everything just has a nice chrome things everything's covered in chrome and it's not overdone either it's very nice emergency brake emergency brake release this is for the high, high beam dimmer switch there, brake pedal, gas pedal. This one's got power seats. I just love all the bright work on the seats as well. Notice how the seat back comes up. Take a gander at these seat belts. This is what seat belts used to look like. They look like amusement park and or airplane seat belts. I actually prefer these. These are nice seat belts. I don't know if they, these, these are in the original style, but I'm not sure if they're with the car. They might be aftermarket because a lot of people in the sixties didn't get seat belts. Like it says body by Fisher. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. There is tons of room underneath the steering wheel. And if there wasn't, this one has the tilt wheel, which is controllable by this stock here. And then you can adjust it to wherever you see fit. On to the button switches and knobs. Starting on the left-hand side, moving right. Toggle slash joystick style control for the driver's side mirror. Headlights, wipers. This looks to be a clock. In the comment section below, is this one supposed to be in there? Because if it is, then this thing has two clocks. Speedometer at the top with odometer inside of it. Heat and ventilation controls. Fan speed to the left of that with three settings, low, medium, and high. Above that, gasoline gauge. Just to the right of that are idiot lights for amp meter, oil pressure, coolant temperature being hot and cold. Above that, right underneath the dash pad is the reverberation and antenna switches. Radio, which is AM, FM, clock, light just above the Starfire script, passenger side, joystick control for the passenger side mirror. Up above, there's sun visors. And notice it has a nice cutout for the rear view mirror which also has the daytime nighttime feature very nice these are these feel like fabric and they're textured fabric they're, uh, 
there's my hand for reference they're really nice sized sun visors there's one over here for the passenger and it's got a courtesy mirror how cool is that so just check this out this has you can control the mirror from this toggle switch see the mirror moving but not only on the driver's side on the passenger side there's one as well and it's controlled by this switch that one doesn't work ashtray is located here and there's two ashtrays driver passenger one cigarette lighter in the center look at everything that's going on with this console there's all the power window switches for the driver's side power uh, window switches for the passenger side and there's storage inside there and it's nice having the light here because you can sort of somewhat see inside here with the light being back here check out the tachometer and its placement it's a weird placement but it looks so cool right there on to the glove box test here's our test subject here's my hand for reference here is our glove box in question and it looks like we can't do the glove box test it should fit in there really well but we can't put it in there because it's got an aftermarket radio tucked inside of there this is what i look like behind the wheel i'm six foot two i fit in this car perfectly and i got to drive a 65 over the summertime these seats in this car versus the seats that were in that car worlds better than those seats those seats they didn't feel good these ones might be redone i'm not entirely sure they're just they're so much better they they feel the material is just so much better the um the, the seats just hold you so much better as well lots of headroom in this car and uh I just I love this car. It's like sitting in a piece of jewelry. Getting in the back seat, just fold the seat forward like that. Here's what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a gander at the greenhouse real quick. And that is the pillar to glass ratio. It is actually really good in this car. Nice big backlight to look out. And look, you can see those fins. It's a very nice view back there. Let's take a look at the seat profile. The seat profile is rather upright. The seat back does dip down in the back just a wee bit. It's not uncomfortable per se. It is interesting though. Ashtray over here, as well as cigarette lighter and window switch, because the windows are electric. It has a coat hook up there, as well as a light. Over here, coat hook, light, armrest, ashtray, lighter. This is what I look like sitting in the back seat. I got adequate headroom, but um, my knee situation is, is worse. This is what my knee situation's like. It's kind of negative. It's pushing the seat up a little bit. But just check out all the bright work on the back of the seats. And it's even got map pockets. Like how cool is that? This is 1964. It does not have a rear armrest in the back here. There is a speaker housing back here. Rear speaker. Nice light in the center console area. Coming to the under the hood section. The hood release for this one is a bit weird, but it's really straightforward. So there's like this little tongue piece right here. You see my finger on that? You just pick up on that, push it forward, and just pick up on the hood. The hood's really heavy. Just look at that engine. This one's got power steering. It's got power brakes. Single master cylinder, though. I love the fact that you can see all of the steering, the steering rack. I love that you can see the steering shaft go down inside the box, and it's all exposed right there. So if you wanted to work on it, you could batteries right here has a nice battery disconnect switch which is always a good thing to think about if you have a classic car this one's called an alternator look at the coffee can that's for vacuum pressure chef boy RD can just painted black Just take a step back here. The hood opens up nice and high so you can work on this car.
On the positive side, good performance, great styling, interior could be mistaken for a Buick or even a Cadillac. It's that good. Lighting everywhere, very well equipped with center console and control over both mirrors from the inside of the car. This might be an industry first. In the comment section below, was this car the first one that had the mirrors, both mirrors controllable from the inside? If not, put what car was in the comment section below, please and thank you. Brushed aluminum, accents everywhere, leather seats. The seats are so good in this car, no joke. They are a night and day difference to the 65 that I reviewed. On the cons, special trim parts are getting hard to find, can be thirsty. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the name of the band and song title will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Moving on to Would You Rather, two scenarios. In the first scenario, okay, side note, just imagine you're gifted these cars and money wasn't an object. What would you rather have? First scenario, 1963 Oldsmobile Starfire, or 1964 Oldsmobile Starfire, or 1965 Oldsmobile Starfire. And feel free to pause it if you need more time to really look at these cars. Second scenario, all of which are from 1964. Oldsmobile Starfire, or Buick Wildcat, or Pontiac Grand Prix. In the comment section, I always like seeing what cars you guys dig. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below, or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Don't have Facebook and want to get in touch with me? No worries. Shoot me an email. My email will be linked in the description, as well as the link to the Facebook um, group. Yeah, so until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1953 Plymouth Belvedere. It was hard to believe that this car was made by Plymouth. That's coming up Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time on What It's Like. Tomorrow we will have an episode. It's Discussion Episode Friday, so see you then. And until then, toodaloo! I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me excitations. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me excitations. I don't know where, but she sends me there. My, my girl, she sends you there.